second thought, I don't think tinfoil will get me much cash on eBay. Today on Memory Lane, I took a look at Cup and Ball. The ball is connected to this cup via this string. You swing it around trying to- Ow! Fuck this thing. My child. Jesus. The ring. Check the ring. Oh, Zordon. are in great danger. The evil story lord Thorazul is turning everyone into stone. Uh, that bites. You want money or something? Only you can stop this villain. Me? Why me? Because you are the only person on earth who has read a book in the past ten years on their own accord. Oh. What about ebooks don't count? Be considerate cheating. My apprentice, you must stop this evil story lord by becoming a master of literacy. So I could become a story lord and save your world? Yes, you could. Or I could watch the story lord's TV show and remain empathetic to your plight. Yes, you may what? Then it's settled. Television wins again. No! This is Story Lords. Death in the night. The letter people taught you how to read. But what does it all mean? Phonics alone can get you only so far. That's where Story Lords comes in. Produced by the University of Wisconsin-Stout in 1984, this PBS series exposed school children to reading comprehension, each episode dealing with a different lesson plan. Episode titles include such riveting gems as Directed Reading Thinking Activity, Inferring Word Meaning and Context, Identifying main idea and details, and integrated comprehension strategies. Did I mention this show is painfully boring? Well, I can see few of you are interested in this show's teaching methods, as most of you have tabbed out and are looking at porn in another window. But for the rest of you, do you want to see what this show is all about? Well, then let's take a look at episode one, The Phantom and I mean... Activating prior knowledge before you read. Ugh. God, it's already boring. Where's my cup and ball, anyways? We start with Grandpa, lost in his way to the shower again. Actually, this is Story Lord Lexor, and he is being pursued by the villain of this series, but I'll get to him later. I'm too old for this sort of thing. I must travel the galaxies to find an apprentice, one who believes and will carry on my work. So of all the potential heroes in the galaxy for this bland Siskin monk to choose from, he selects... The child equivalent of Milton from Office Space. Norbert. Uh, um. Norbert. The protagonist of this children's series about reading is named Norbert. Were you trying to make reading even more square? So, Norbert finds Lexor's magic ring on his bike and it transports him to the magical world of... Holy camoly! I'm in my own backyard! His own backyard. Mystical! Holy kamoly! Also, you may have noticed by now that he has an annoying catchphrase. Holy kamoly! Holy kamoly! Holy kamoly! Holy kamoly, Mandy! No one says holy kamoly. No one should say holy kamoly. Although, in fairness, I think I used to own a shirt that said holy kamoly on it. Oh, the 90s. I need an apprentice story lord to help defeat Thorzul and save both our planets. Uh, why me? Don't blame Lexor, blame the casting director. Because you believe. Well, what do I have to do? First thing you gotta do, acting lessons. So Lexor gives him the ring, which is like a magical pager that summons him whenever there's danger. Time lords, get a TARDIS. Story lords, get a Bikotron. It's as dignified as it sounds. Also, Norbert wears these special gloves that... Okay, this series just hates children. I'm convinced of that. Once in the land of... Moju... 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 Wisconsin, Norbert happens upon a damsel in distress. I'm an apprentice, Story Lord. Will that do? You are? Oh, I see you wear the gloves. Glitter dish gloves. That's all it takes to be Defender of the Galaxy. 
The girl explains that an evil story lord told her to read that book or he will turn her to stone. The only problem? He put a lock on it. Whatever will they do? Naturally, they'll ask a teacher. Fortunately, Norbert has the power of bad dissolve effects. Before you read it, think for a minute about the title. What do you think it's going to be about? That's sound advice. Judge a book by its cover. Like this. I'm sure this is all about pirates and sword fights and stuff. And this one, I'm sure it's all about a killer shark and not at all a convoluted tale about mermaids. Let's look at your book. It snowed and snowed and snowed and snowed. Written by Ann Jonas. Sorry, Ann, you're better than that. The real means you've got to look at the title and think about what you already know before you read. Shouldn't this just be common sense? What do I know about elephants? They walk like this. They go from their hind legs like this. They go... Yeah, something like that. Do that again. Yeah. Our fate is in his hands. Look! You were right. What I already knew about elephants is helping me understand what's in this book. You know, this book without any words, all pictures. What does this have to do with reading? I'm starting to hate this show. Ah, but fortunately, one reason to watch Story Lords is rolling on up. This is Thor Zool, resident badass and low budget actor. Gun it! Run over that kid! Run over that kid! Run him over! Run oh, just nicked him. Well, my pretty. Are you ready to dance for me? Now, this is an awesome villain. Even the name is rock solid Thor and Zool. They made quite a bearded baby together. Or will you join my little collection of statues here? Like all the others who couldn't read. <laughs> <laughs> it's also good to know that Bulk and Skull finally found a lucrative career. Uh, please turn her to stone. I know she technically won, but just... Just end this. Oh boy, now I know why he put a lock on this book. You must have helped them. I'll get you! Gotta go! Home. Uh oh, there's a fly in here. I'll get you good. Damn, it got away. And by the way, his chauffeur's name is Milk Breath. Milk Breath? At first I thought this was one of those kid show quirks where they change beer into milk, so his name's supposed to be along the lines of Beer Breath. But that is also a stupid name, so I'm just completely perplexed. What does Urban Dictionary have to say about it? Milk breath. The state of a person's breath after giving a blowjob. That makes sense. Milk breath? The rest of the episodes in the series have the same formula. Norbert is doing something benign when Lexor psychically contacts him to check the ring. My son, the ring ring. Hey wait, if he can just use the shining, then why does he need the ring at all? Is Lexor one of those assholes who calls you to tell you to check your email? I hate those guys. But it's not like Lexor is ever interrupting anything important. It's the last play in the Super Bowl. The Packers need a touchdown to win. There's the pass! And his toy runner's in the clear! Still doing better than Brett Favre. Another episode starts in an arcade. The perfect place for your reading series. <laughs> Story Lords? I thought it was Wizard of War. Damn knockoff cabinets. Once summoned, Milton, I mean Norbert, will then hurry home and put on his magic gloves. He's enjoying those a little too much. Then he'll hop on his exerciser, say the magic words, and he quantum leaps to the character of the week. He meets all sorts of people, such as Chef Boyardee. Of course it's a restaurant. Mine. Chef Jeff's. Funny voices, acting, it's all the same thing. There's this flustered artist. Oh boy, 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 oh boy. She annoys me. Let her die. There's also the school librarian, creepy twins, uh, whatever the fuck this kid's supposed to be, and a mime, really? Did you really run out of community theater actors so fast that you had to resort to using the fucking mime? Thorzul. Thorzul, of course. And he wants you to reunite with Amanda Palmer and put out another Dresden Dolls album? Wanted you to perform what was written on the scroll. Ah, I'm really bad at charades. The rest of the episode will center on Norbert helping the imperiled character. 
But that's too interesting. Let's return to class. Today, we're going to continue talking about sound and how sound moves. So in the middle of each episode is this classroom session. Good, because I was getting too invested in that plot. What do you do when you read something and don't understand it? Stop reading. Stop reading. Forever. Oh, chalkboards, that's the noise I don't miss. Then, think for a moment about what you don't understand. Great! Watching a teacher write stuff on the board! Children don't get enough of this in school. I'm glad my fantasy shows depart from reality. Oh my god, this is so fucking boring. I want to rip out my jawbone and disembowel myself with the jagged edge. And how am I supposed to remember all those steps on the board? It's like a clusterfuck. Just say straro. What? It's a word made up from the first letter of each word on the board. Oh. Now how do I remember straro? It's a stupid word and I feel stupid saying it. It reminds me of all those study methods your teachers give you, like SQ3R. Yeah, I remember what SQ3R is. I don't remember what the hell it stands for, so it makes it completely useless. Straro, really? Our story lord then returns to more Wisconsin and uses his knowledge to help these stupid, stupid adults. Then, we're treated to an appearance by his royal badness. He's a very trapezoidal villain. <sighs> she did it! She got it right! You answered my question. It's impossible! Oh, you remembered to read on and see if your first guess made sense. Ah! If only you had the brain of a cheese grater, then my half-assed scheme would have worked. You see, Thorzel's plans for domination are all dependent on the populace being completely ignorant. So he's a politician, big deal. We are eventually introduced to Norbert's sister, Mandy, and she is an equally impressive actor. You want to help me with my homework? Sure. What do I have to do? Wow, such riveting acting. I totally believe that they are reading from a script. Oh, want to see something really rad? Here are the kids acting as actors. I'm from a family that's called Brontosaurus. We eat so much, there's not enough for us. I just walk in on. Eventually, Mandy gets wise to Norbert's disappearances, perhaps thinking that he's got a meth lab out in the shed, so she tags along and gets swept up in his adventure as his companion, an apprentice's apprentice. After a few episodes, she becomes as capable as her brother. Dandelions. Dandelions! Did they just have a moment? At one point, she even has to venture out on her own. A painter! We already helped a painter do something new. Look at this. Dear Karoma. Uh, a nice bottle of Karoma sounds good right now. Please paint me a picture of a kestrel. A kestrel. What's that? Who knows? If I like it, I'll ask you to paint other bigger hawks. It could be some sort of flying bug, I suppose. Oh yeah, maybe this hawk is a bug. How are you still alive? But of course, Norbert Jr. figures out the answer and saves the life of this scad dropout. And just in time, here comes Thorzul. No friend, get me out of here. And there goes Thorzul. That's his one appearance in this episode. Now that's what I call drive by acting. Now Thorzul is a pretty epic villain for a low-budget 50-minute instructional program. So of course he has to have an epic conclusion for a low-budget 15-minute instructional program. And it all culminates in episode 12, Integrating Comprehension Strategies of Doom. Having grown weary of being foiled in Wisconsin, Thorzul brings the fight to our world. There's a motorcycle outside that looks exactly like Thorzul's. What would he be doing? Announcing the one and only for Zoo. Oh, shit just got real. Greetings, Earthlings. As a child, this was one of my biggest fears. That a TV villain would come strolling into my classroom and threaten my life. But, but. 
One more butt and you'll be a billy goat. <laughs> Worst of all, their jokes would be terrible. Try to make sense out of these. How can we do this without our Star Lord gloves? The Star Lord power is not in the gloves, it's in our own brains. Then why did we need the gloves? Because they look fantastic on me now, don't question it. One minute. Oh, of course they figure it out. Can weigh more than 15 pounds. That's like the difference between you and an elephant. I don't believe it! Your royal badness? Would you like some warm milk? I made it myself. You've won! You've beaten me! Then Thor Zul angrily and humorously storms out of the classroom. They just have a moment. Oh, oh, oh. Robert, what's going on here? Norbert, why did that daddy just run off of those charred human remains? You have become story lords on your own. Well, I guess we should thank you or something. No, don't thank me. Thank your fellow story lord who has worked undercover. That is actually a pretty good twist. Sorry if I ruined it for you. Retroactive spoiler alert. Holy kamoli. And one last thing. In episode 10, pronoun anaphora, ugh, we discover that Thor Zul had a son. Can I go now, Pop? Yes, run along, Junior. You've been very helpful. Now, what are the chances that he will return to seek revenge upon those who took his father? None, because this show's done. There are no other episodes. A big, fat, scary man? So my final thoughts... Those all has obliterated all life on Morjus. Your apathy has doomed us all. Our blood is on your hands. Obi-Wan Kenobi, that's what you remind me of. Oh, and to think of all the Star Wars jokes I could have been making. It's a trap. It's a trap. <laughs> he may strike you down, but you will return more powerful. Oh, you're just fucking dead. So my final thoughts. Well, I feel bad making fun of this show's acting or production. It's like laughing at a kid in a wheelchair. Which I'm not above doing, but it's still too easy of a target. Instead, I'd like to criticize this show for its content. Story Lords utilizes the whole language method of reading in which students understand words through context rather than simply phonics. This could be useful at times when a word is unfamiliar or a meaning is muddled, but the danger lies in a child jumping to conclusions or drawing a false meaning from a paragraph. The format of the show is quite brilliant in turning the fight against ignorance into the battle of good and evil. And as is typical, evil looks good. Look at this guy! I keep expecting him to break out a Rickenbacker and a harmonica. So yes, I like this stupid, stupid show. That's a lot of blood. Speaking of blood, next time, Halloween special. So is it true that when someone dies, they empty their bowels? Oh, God. <laughs>